Hello, this is Boyd Anderson and today we're going to be having a look at how to create this high key black and white effect in Adobe Lightroom. This is about the 800,000th time that I've attempted to record this so I've decided I'm just going to go even if I stumble and stutter so bear with me if you will kind viewer. Let's have a look at the original and here it is a uh, color shot of course taken on a London bus and as this girl turned I was able to focus in that moment on her right eye not much else is in focus because it's a very wide aperture I think f1.4 yes in this instance uh, so let's look at the steps from here to here how do we get that well the first thing we might notice is that there's a crop so I'm going to click on the develop menu and let's crop the shot down and my original thinking in, in, in cropping if we go to uh, the black and white one I flick over it and you look in the top left hand corner up here was that I dislike the bar and I dislike what's going on around here there's somebody else sneaking in the shot and uh, I dislike this white area triangle that's there I often look at this smaller snapshot that's in, in the top left here because I, it, I find it it helps this often is too big um, so the way I'm doing this is to choose a 4 by 5 aspect ratio a, a squarer aspect ratio than the original photograph which will allow me to nick out everything that displeases me on this top right side and to take it down so that the bar has gone on the top left what I notice is that the intersection between the thirds here is very close to this girl's eye which pleases me immensely I like when I get thirds probably the graphic designer in me uh, coming out where I like to line things things up but that's why what I'm going to do is to position that intersection on her left eye and crop the shot in that way. What next? Well, I think that I could do with a bit of sharpening and I'm always wary to not over sharpen the shot but because I know I'm going to be converting this to black and white I often sharpen more than I would do if I was leaving it colour and that's because the sharpening will introduce a certain amount of grain in areas and if I whack this up to 150 you may or may not be able to see but we are getting grain in the eye around on the skin areas here but I don't mind that um, I come from a, a discipline of film photography and when we were shooting in black and white very often uh, the shots that we were taking would be on a fast film and uh, there'd be lots of grain anyway so I'm just going to go with it at 150. I like the way that this eye here becomes much sharper if I push it right up by that amount. So we're going to be working as I said with a black and white shot so if we call up the basic controls here an easy way to convert to black and white is just to click in the top right of this treatment area here and I'll go back to the full shot and in fact what's happening is that where down here we've got the hue, saturation, lightness, color and black and white controls what's happening is that Lightroom is making a stab at changing this to a black and white in a way that it thinks it should do it but I don't want it to work as a default so I'm going to hold down the option key on the Mac and reset these curves and I'll speak a little while on what these colors are for in the context of black and white so if we go to the final result we'll see that it's a it's a much more contrasty shot and we've we've lost lots of detail which obviously is deliberate but we've lost lots of detail and we're only just retaining here the shape of her face against the white sky in the background whereas at the moment we've got a much flatter image so how do we achieve that well we know that skin tones are in the sort of yellowy orangey red area 
So let's see what happens. It's probably closest to orange, in fact, the color of, I know it's not actually orange, but it's closest to. So let's see what happens when I drag this slider to the left. And if you, I mean, she's starting to look like a zombie, but every single blemish and bump is becoming revealed. And it's in fact the opposite of what we're looking for. And as you might expect, we drag it the other way. We are creating that high key effect that we're looking for. I've taken it too far there um, in order to demonstrate the effect. But uh, that's a good indication. So as a matter of course, what you can do with any black and white shot is to play with these sliders. If you've got sky, for example, and you drag down the blue slider, this is going to make the sky much darker. And it would be equivalent to the old days where we would stick colored film on the front of the lens before we took certain shots. We might put an orange filter on front if we were taking a landscape to make the sky look nice and dramatic. Well, it's here that we achieve a similar result. But there is a more sophisticated way of uh, using these sliders. So I will reset them again using the option key and click. And that's to use this little control here. Now what this will do, if I select it and come over to the photographic area, is as I click, it will sample the color underneath the point where the cross is. So if I click here and drag downwards, that area underneath where I'm dragging down is in fact blue. And lo and behold, over here, we can see that these blue sliders have been dragged down. So if I click where the skin is and drag down, I get the same zombie effect that I had before. And if I drag up, then I can lighten the skin in the same way that I was doing earlier. How far am I going to take it? Probably up to about somewhere there, 50. But you also see that it's taken some yellow with it as well. So there is some yellow in that skin. And uh, yeah, this is the effect. This is how I use these sliders to, uh, if I was working on a, a landscape uh, photograph and I had some sky, I'd just click on the sky, it would automatically sample underneath, drag down, and I get a nice dramatic sky going on. So I'm going to leave it about there, 50 and uh, 5 of yellow, and we'll move on to the next control. Having introduced some of the high key effect, I'll now come over to these general tone controls here because I want to up the contrast. Upping the contrast is going to, I'm going to take it even up to maybe 60, uh, is really going to bring out this eye. One of the things I like about high key is there's a very subtle gradation between the lighter tones, but the darks become really dark. If we look here, this is the finished result I'm looking for. I've lost all the detail deliberately in this side of the head. Uh, not for everybody perhaps, but uh, that's the look I'm going for in this instance. So one of the ways of doing that is to drag the contrast right over. I'll leave it there at 66. And the other thing I want to do is to use the clarity tool. And the clarity tool, if I drag it to the right, it's going to give an effect which I, I don't actually want, but it's it's a bit like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It's gradually reducing everything to blacks. It's going to bring out some more detail as well. We can see some of the skin detail down here. And dragging it the other way is going to make a much softer image. It's going to simulate uh, putting a bit of Vaseline on the lens. Which again, an old school technique. I'm, I'm referring back to old school techniques quite a lot here. I uh, we'll drag this one back. I want a soft effect around about 30. So there we are. You can see I'm starting to get close to what we had in the sample image that we started with. How do we get it all the way? Well, there's one more step. What I could do is to come down to effects and use a vignette. 
I don't actually like vignettes. I mean, I like the effect, but I don't like the vignette tool. I'm going to overemphasize what I think the problem is here. If I drag it all the way to the left, and again, we look at this small image on the top left here, we can see the oval. And I think even if I am using this tool, that uh, the thing I'm always avoiding is, can I see the oval? And if I can, I think I've taken it too far. Um, we, we do have the option of changing the roundness to uh, take it all the way down again and turn off the feather so we can see what's happening. It's going to become rounder or, but I want more control than that. So let's reset this tool. And instead, what I'm going to use is a radial filter, which gives me much more control. So we can select it by just clicking on this circle here. And in the use of the radial filter, I often want to go beyond the edges of the photograph. So what I want to do is to reduce, oh, I've gone the wrong way, reduce the size of the photograph so that I've got this pasteboard area around so that when I drag out my circle, if I need to change it in any way, I can come into this gray area here and I've got a lot more control. So what do we want? Well, I'm going to just basically uh, go around the face and having placed this control um, I'm just going to do something to see where I'm making the change and you can see it's inside the circle that I drew which I don't want to happen and therefore I can come down to this invert mask turn it off and then anything I do will happen to the outside of the photograph which is exactly what I want and what are we going to do here? Well, I'm going to add even more contrast around the edge of the shot. So I'm going to drag this all the way over to the right and I'm going to take it as far as 100. Let's just get that exposure back. Double tap, takes it back to zero. And uh, shadows, well, the shadows will, if I drag to the right, give me more detail. You can see in the hair, so drag to the right to get more detail. Well, I want less. I want some blacks in there. So I'm going to take that all the way back to, I think, somewhere here. I've still got a bit going on. Uh, a bit of detail there. And I can then start to pull out the circle so I get the effect I want here. That's not making too much difference, but I am going to take it down to about there. And I'm also going to bring down some blacks. So pulling down the blacks will, again, make it much darker in those edge areas. I don't want too much, but I might just snick off 10, something like that. Click on the circle to turn it back, and there we are. Um, there's the first instance, and there's the second instance. I've got a a much darker shot here but I still quite like that as a result and there we are high key in Adobe Lightroom